welcome. This is the last uh, lesson in uh, rational functions. It's on modeling rational functions. They're really fun to model and really useful. Uh, I like the one that we use in this uh, project. It's talking about an art club plans to sell silkscreen t-shirts to raise funds. The club will buy a silk screening kit that costs a thousand dollars. I like that, that's important. In addition, the club will, be, will buy plain t-shirts, five dollars each. Each is pretty important. And we'll spend two dollars per t-shirt for supplies needed for silk screening. The club plans to sell the t-shirts for fifteen dollars each. Okay? What profit will the sale of each t-shirt bring the club? Okay, so the first thing that they step you through is they have you look at the total costs. And if you read the fine print here, they say to make total costs a function per t-shirt. That's what the T is for. T will stand for number of t-shirts. And all of these problems. Because everything's based upon how many of those we sell or buy. Cost of the kit, a thousand dollars and then we have the cost per shirt at five per shirt and the art supplies cost per shirt is two dollars per shirt any of this not make sense make questions on your paper and come and ask me or I can explain it and it won't take long so if we simplify all that we would have C of T equals a thousand plus 70. Okay? Now the next little part is write a rule for the ST, the function for total sales. So S stands for sales per t-shirt. And that would be um, $15 per t-shirt. Again, that's what we underlined up above. Go back up and look at it. Next, they say, use the verbal model to write a rule for the profit. The function for profit, simply the rule if, simplify the rule if possible. So the profit, P of T, equals the sales, 15T, minus the costs, a thousand plus seventy. So in simplifying this, we would distribute this negative to each of these, and we would have fifteen t minus seventy. So in simplifying this, we would end up with eight t minus a thousand. Okay. So now it says use the verbal model to write a rule for the profit per t-shirt. The uh, function for profit per item, that's what the PI stands for, is profit per item is the 8t minus a thousand over however many t-shirts we sell, which would just be t. Okay. What is the domain of the profits per item of the t-shirts? Well, the domain of this, I guess we could all agree, the domain is the t-shirts, but we can all agree that we can't have a negative number of t-shirts. Next thing we could all agree to is that it would be um, it would be limited to the whole numbers because you're not going to sell a half of a t-shirt. So I might just write um, x such that x is whole numbers. And that would be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay.
next page, I won't step through all of these, hopefully. I just want to get you going with these because they're pretty neat. Now they want us to figure out the rules for the cost per item t-shirt. So again, we're going to take the cost that we had before, the 7T plus 1,000, but now we divide it by the number of t-shirts that we sell. Then they also ask us to find the the um, sales per item. And it was 15T, and now it'll be over T. Now it says, show how you can obtain the profit per item from the cost and the sales. So again, we have the profit being equal to the sales per item, just like they said on the front, minus the cost per item. So we would have 15T minus 7T plus 1,000. Per T. Now they have like denominators, so we can go ahead and just bring the T over. This was 15 T. Sorry about that, I left that off up there. 15 T minus 7 T would be 8 T and a negative 1,000. Now it says write the rule for a profit per item T in graphing form. So we would actually distribute that T as I've shown you to do when you're graphing these under each and we would see that we have a negative 1000 T plus 8. That's P P I T. Okay. Use the graphing form to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the graph. So our vertical is just that T cannot equal zero. In other words, think about that in the context of the situation. We're saying that you can't have zero t-shirts that you sell. Okay, because you wouldn't have any profit per shirt if you don't sell any. The horizontal, again you look at your K value, this is your Y. Um, the horizontal is 8, right up there. Okay, so what that means is down here on the graph when you go to plot it, this is such a vital one to know what it means, this 8. If you think about it, our y value is our profit. Okay, so this is the profit per shirt. Profit per item. And this is our number of shirts. Number items. I'm just writing items so that you can think about this in other circumstances. And we have 100, 300, 500, count those out. We have 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, and um, 2, 4, 6, 8. With 100 in there, 100 goes into 1,000 10 times. Negative 10 plus 8 would be a negative 2. 200 goes into 1,000 five times. Negative 5 and positive 8 would be 3. 
500 goes into 1,000, negative 2 times. 8 minus 2 is 6. So if we plot these points, we end up at 100 at negative 2, at 200, halfway between those two, we end up at 3, and at 600, we end up up here at, no, at 500, 300, 500, we end up up here at 6. Now, remember our horizontal asymptote is right there, and we're trying to figure out what that means. It is at the $8 profit per item. And if we look, our curve is going like that. So what do you think that that means? It's obviously an asymptote. Let's see if we... When completing the table for values, you should have found that profit per item, 100, is negative 2. Explain why the profit per item should be negative in this case. Why would your profit be negative if you've done 100 t-shirts? Again, you might think about the cost to get into this company, into this business, was $1,000, and that's got to be divided among the t-shirts. And if you've only done 100 t-shirts, your cost per t-shirt is still $10 per t-shirt, because 100 into 1,000 goes 10 times. So you've got a negative $10 cost on each t-shirt, and your profit is only $8. So that kind of gives you a hint of what's going on there. If you don't get it, come see me. Describe the transformations you would have to perform on the graph of the parent function 1 over t to produce the graph of p, p per item t. Okay, so if we look back at our transformations, what would this be? That's in your a value. If you said stretch, you're right on. This would be a reflection, good, and that is your, hope you're saying vertical stretch, good, okay. Are the values of profit per item increasing or decreasing? What does that mean for the club? So remember, increasing looks like that. Decreasing looks like that. Go back and look at the graph and decide which way is it going. And explain what you think that means for the club. Okay, in terms of the context of the problem. So you've got to think about t-shirts and profit per item. What t-intercept does the graph of p for t have? And what does that mean for the club? Okay, the t-intercept is the x-intercept. So where does it intercept the x? Right about 125. Think about that. That means when we were explaining that, that the 2 down here was because you owed more than what you were making on the t-shirts. That was why you were down at two, is it was costing you $10 a t-shirt, and your profit was only eight. So what do you think the zero there would mean at about 125? Instead of being negative $2 per t-shirt, you're at zero. So put in the context of the problem. For what values of the profit per item is negative? For what t values is the profit per item positive? What does this mean for the club? And you can just say, you know, from 0 up to 120, you've got a negative graph down here. It's all negative. And explain what it means in the context of the profit per item. And then after 125, it all becomes positive, growing ever so close to that horizontal asymptote at 8. 
Anyway, all of this is positive and explain what that means. What in behavior does profit per item have and what does that mean for the club? What does this mean for the club that it will not go above eight? What does that mean for the profit per item? Okay. And now we get into a little more reflection. Suppose the club hopes to make a profit per item of five dollars. Use the graph to estimate the number of t-shirts that must be sold. Then write and solve an equation to find the exact number. Does the exact number make sense in this situation? Okay. So let's look at the graph. Profit per item would be right there at five dollars. So you'd come over to here, figure out how many shirts you need to sell to get a profit of five dollars per item because that's an average. So tell how many you need to sell. Okay. Now, does the number make sense in the situation? Now you need to solve the algebra and see if it makes sense. So you would take the equation that we graphed, 1,000 t, a negative, plus 8, and set it equal to 5, because that's where your line's coming across to meet it. Okay, and it, you would need to um, go ahead and do all the math to get the t by itself. Go back to the other lessons on rational functions if you're a little bit lost how to do that. I think you can get it. And then explain whether or not it makes sense, particularly if it's not a whole number, if that would make sense. Does the profit per item increase faster when the number of t-shirts sold increases from 150 to 250 or from 250 to 350? Okay, so we're looking at a range on our graph. They're asking, does it increase faster from 150 to 250, that's about uh, almost four, and this is about one, so a three dollar increase compared to 250 to 350, compared to almost four up to a little over four, so about a dollar increase. So I guess you already know that, that um, they're quite different and you know which one increases faster, so put that in your own words. So now they want you to go through and give them different options. They're, the club's still not satisfied and these questions are so important that you get them. So they're thinking about buying a gently used screen, silk screening kit for 800. So you're going to go back to the original equation and you're going to plug in 800 instead of the 1000. And then they want you to explain, once you get that equation, what the vertical stretch is and um, how much less it is than the original equation. And then also what the profits per shirt uh, are. And then they take you to the next idea. What if they increase the price of a silkscreen t-shirt to $18? How much would their profit be then? So you will plug that in as 18t minus the 1000 minus 7t. And instead of having a negative 1000 over t plus 8, you'll have negative 1000 over t plus 11. So $11 per t-shirt, that's pretty cool, if you can sell them for 18 The next one says their other plan was to buy plain t-shirts in bulk to reduce their cost to $4 per shirt. So this time their cost goes down. So they have 6t plus 1,000t over t. And it's just reduced their price quite a bit, and then you simplify that. 
As you simplify that, you'll see what your horizontal asymptote is. And it shows you what the profit per t-shirt is going to be in the long run once you sell enough. Then the last question is having you compare those three options. Which of the three options has the greatest impact on the t-intercept? In other words, which one has the t-intercept intersecting at a lower amount? Remember the t-intercept is right here. So go ahead and graph those, even if you need to use this graph. Graph them and see which one has the lowest t-intercept. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Hope you got this.